I have a great idea. You want to hear it? Let's try to piss off two fan bases that watch my channel in the same video. How's that sound? Sounds like a great idea, doesn't it? Well, I decided to make this video after Philip Sedina had a crazy good game yesterday. Now, obviously, you could see that in itself as a straw man argument, but hold your horses. We will try to take a look at these things very objectively, and we're not going to let one game define one player's career, nor are we going to let one small span in a season define the other player's career. This is a video of a commentary discussing who would you rather have? Yasperi Code Kanyemi or Philip Zadina. Let's just do Code Kanyemi versus Zadina in the title just to make it a little bit more attractive. But this is a weird, weird argument because first off, there are several different ways you could go about addressing this kind of thing. So let's go over that right now. KK versus Zadina. The way we're going to be talking about this here is simple. Who would you rather have? Who do you think would be more valuable to a team? And if you were playing GM mode, who would have a higher trade value? That's kind of the idea here. Not going to imply anything like, oh, trade's coming. No, just saying if one of these were to be traded, who would have more value? That's pretty much the idea that we're going over here. And we're going to be talking about this in a few different ways. The first way is going to be indicated by their draft year. Who had a better draft year regarding the league they played, the position they were playing in, and who would have been drafted first under normal circumstances? Now, if you're a fan of both of these teams, you probably have your idea of who would have been drafted first under normal circumstances, but let's move forward. Secondly, we're going to be talking about their draft plus one years. Who was more valuable to their respective teams, and overall, how were they? Then we're going to be talking about today, their draft plus two years, and how they're doing in the NHL or the AHL or wherever in this season, and then we're going to be talking about the long-term future. The long-term future is what's going to have the biggest indicator and the biggest influence on overall value and the conclusion, pretty much. So let's go over that right here. Yesperi Kotkaniemi versus Philip Sedina in their draft years. Who was the better player? Well, you got to take a look at it from both sides. Kotkaniemi was a young, young 17-year-old playing in the Finnish Liga as a center for the Porin Asat. He was one of the youngest players in the Liga. He solidified himself as a two-way center who did, in fact, belong in that league and finished up with 29 points and 57 games played. He had more points in more games than Jesse Pugliarvi did when Pugliarvi was in his draft year. And because of this, Kokkaniemi was drafted third overall by the Montreal Canadiens, who did, in fact, need a center. That's kind of where the whole argument and the whole divergence comes with this idea, because Philip Zadina, on the other hand, was a player who, for a good part of their draft years, was challenging Svechnikov for that second overall spot. Philip Zadina, for many, was a consistent top three pick. Out of the elite prospects, drafting, and mock draft profiles over here, there's only two outlets that had him below three, and they both had him at number four. Philip Zadina was a consistent goal scorer in the QMJHL who put up a really good number of 44 goals in 57 games played. He was battling it out with Alexi Lafreniere for the rookie scoring lead in the QMJHL. Now, Lafreniere is two years younger than Zadina is in terms of the draft years, but that's how it went down. Zadina and his crazy world juniors was also a huge factor as to why he was touted this way. And most people could agree that if it wasn't the Canadians drafting third overall, and if it wasn't the Coyotes drafting at fifth overall, Philip Zadina wouldn't have been on the board by the time Ottawa rolled around. And in fact, Philip Zadina would be nowhere near the board by the time the Detroit Red Wings rolled around at number six. So, if you remember the draft, it did go Darlene Svechnikov, and then it went Kotkaniemi because the Canadians did need a center. 
Brady Kachuk was a consistent top four, top five pick. He went fourth overall to Ottawa, and then Barrett Hayton had kind of the same situation as Kokonyemi, where the Coyotes really wanted the center. They drafted him fifth overall. Zadina went down to Detroit, and then Quinn Hughes went to Vancouver seventh. Yeah, okay, we're not going to talk about that here, but overall, I believe... Even in their draft years, if you take a look at the videos that I made, I personally had Zadina over Kotkaniemi because the goal scoring ability and the impact in the game, the offensive IQ and the overall offensive package, in my opinion, was an overall more valuable package than Kotkaniemi and his solidified two-way game. And if you check out the videos I made, hey, I said that. I had Zadina on my mock draft number three. So, Zadina gets the edge there. Let's go over into their draft plus one years. Hey, Kokanyemi was in the NHL. Zadina was in the AHL. And, in fact, it's not even close if you take a look at how they performed in their draft plus one years. Kokanyemi had 34 points in 79 NHL games. As an 18-year-old, as one of the youngest players in the entire league, Code Kanyemi was the first person born in the year 2000 and beyond to play in one of the big four sports leagues, the NHL, NBA, MLB, or NFL. And that is something that's really, really cool. Kokonyemi had the same points per game as Alexander Barkov did in his Draft Plus One year. Barkov played less games, Kokonyemi had just a little bit more points, but the points per game kind of averages out normally, so this in itself, taking a look at the player that Barkov has become, and taking a look at where Kokonyemi is projected to go from his draft plus one, Kokonyemi easily takes the draft plus one argument out of the water. NHL versus AHL, it's not even close. Taking a look at who he was able to beat out numbers-wise, and how he was able to do it, Kokonyemi was a crazy, crazy new threat. Nobody who was going to challenge for the Calder, but... Somebody who, as an 18-year-old, people were absolutely in love with, and rightfully so. Zadina was a player that a lot of people thought would make the NHL in his draft plus one, but he was drafted by Detroit. And Detroit loves to take their time developing their guys. Send them to the AHL, send them back to the minors, and don't give them the NHL spot right away. Even with Dylan Larkin, Larkin took a year before he went over to Detroit. Sider is doing the same thing right now. Rasmussen took a year. And Zadina, hey, who cares if you were supposed to go earlier in the draft? You're getting your chance in the AHL. And for the most part, he was okay. 35 points in 59 games played. But if you do take a look at it, Kokonyemi was in the NHL, so he does have the edge over Zadina there. But now, taking a look at how things are today, Kotkaniemi, he's in probably one of the worst sophomore slumps we've seen in a while. Yeah, Zadina has more points than Kotkaniemi right now. Zadina has 6 points in 8 games, Kotkaniemi has 5 and 22. It's really been not great for Kotkaniemi, and he got injured on top of that as well, so that is a really big sucker. But as for Philip Zadina, he's finally getting his chance on the power play. He's getting some good opportunities. He got three points last night, which is why everybody is kind of telling me to redo my Zadina potential video. But if you take a look at that video, I still said that Zadina can become a really, really good player. So I don't see why people would tell me, no, you gotta redo it, Lego. You suck. But... That's kind of why I'm making this video here. But Zadina today definitely has a really big shot at being more valuable than Kokanyemi. Assuming Kokanyemi's sophomore slump continues, assuming Zadina gets better, and assuming everything stays the same. Kokanyemi could, in fact, come alive, but today, at this moment, the player who is more valuable is indeed Zadina. Now, that's not to discredit Kokanyemi, because the guy was really good last year. And going forward into the future, it's really a toss-up between who you value more, a center with two-way abilities like Anze Kopitar or a lethal sniper like Zadina, who could pot up towards of 40-45 goals in a year. Zadina could be a Maurice Richard winner one day. But, Code Kanyemi is kind of modeling his game in the same vein that Barkov did, who is a prime Selkie candidate as well. So, it all boils down to who you believe is a little bit more valuable. Assuming each of these guys hit their primes and they're amazing, I can totally see Zadina taking the cake or Code Kanyemi. But if it were up to me, Honestly, I'd go Zadina. I don't think Kokonyemi's ceiling is that of a Barkov, even though he did display those numbers earlier on. 
To me, Barkov is more the exception than the rule, and I could totally see Kokanyemi maxing out as a first-line center who could put upwards of 60-70 points in a year. I don't see a 100-point potential out of Kokanyemi, but I do see a really strong two-way guy. Which is why, to me, I personally would say Zadina is better. I'm going with my gut and I'm going with what I've been saying for years, is that Zadina probably should have been drafted higher, and if it wasn't the Canadiens, who knows? Zadina could have been that third overall pick. So, obviously I'm not trying to spark hate amongst either of these fan bases, but, you know, it's gonna happen regardless. I really don't like the idea of thrashing on other people's prospects just because they're not of the same team of you, because in my opinion, prospects and young guys should all be developed in the same way and be supported in the same way because they're young guys, they're not really affiliated with any team, they don't have any rivalries yet, but this was just a quick head-to-head -head on two of the best in the game at the moment. Hope you enjoyed this video, social 99, and bye. <laughs>